It's Tuesday night, and we're back for one more uh, neighborhood news. And um, Channel 95, 7, 7 o'clock at night, um, we have uh, guests with us. But remember, if you're watching this uh, show and it's not a Tuesday night, it's because you're watching a repeat show. So please um, you come back on next Tuesday at 7 o'clock here on Channel 95, and we will have a new show for you. My right side, my right man, is Faust. Everybody knows him, but he, he well, looks they do. He, he looks different. I promised your viewers <laughs> a, a haircut last time I was on the show, so <laughs> I, I came through. I, it was a campaign promise, and I, I made good on it. <laughs> and on my left side, I have Michelle, which um, I believe she was on, on the show before the elections and talking to us a little bit about the question um, on the ballot um, that she um, got it passed by the city council. Uh, she told me on uh, there, I don't know for what, she can, she can do it by herself, but uh, she told me um, on, on this question, and I'm, I'm very glad to, to help out and, and to do whatever I could to, to pass it. And today we're going to talk about this transfer station that, besides, got 9,921 votes. That was yes. a lot of votes. Yeah, the big winner, the big winner last night <laughs> as we, we were taping the show was the transfer station. Exactly. And, and, uh, and I, 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 I said it last night um, that it was my Christmas night. I yeah. got everything I got. Yeah, I felt like Christmas. You know, yesterday. you know, we got a new mayor, we got a transfer station uh, passed, and we got the the uh, um, the, uh, the the committee the, there, uh, the, the city charter review, the charter, charter review. review. So uh, I mean, we got everything we uh, we asked for. I think that the people of Fall River are looking for answers and they're looking for alternatives and choices. Mm -hmm. And so that the transfer station, sure, mm -hmm. uh, obviously we need to to look around to, for solutions to our trash problem. And the reason I, I agreed with Michelle when she approached me, um, you know, for support, pretty much for support, not for help, she knows what she's doing, uh, <laughs> just for support, was the fact that um, they can decide anything they want, the city councils, the mayor, but if the community, it, it's not involved, because the community are the ones that are gonna pay for it. If we don't get them involved since day one, they could decide whatever they want to decide it. When it comes time for us to pay the bill, we're going to complain about because sure. we were not part of the we we were not part of the movement to, to resolve the problem. So here is that we did everything different with the with this uh, project. First, even before the city councils or the mayor decide anything, the people decided, yes, I want to give it a shot. You know, so now is the time that the work needs to be done, and that's when Michelle's going to start um, giving as much information possible to the public, so they have uh, a, a, a sense when that comes in front of the uh, city council or you know, uh, approach, the mayor approaches the city council, at least the people know what we're talking about. Michelle, talk us, let us know a little bit about the transfer station. Why, uh, I mean, I already know, <coughs> but I want you to explain to people why um, you think that, that that's the long-term solution for our trash problem. Well, I don't think in and of itself, mm -hmm. it's the whole answer. That, you know, it has to be a multifaceted um, solution, I think. Um, you know, we also, I talked about with Barry Richards the other day that, you know, we could also purchase what they call a grinder. Mm -hmm. um, a grinder would reduce our yard waste by a minimum of 50%. I mean, you know, how many truckloads can you take? Put, it's like a, a chipper. You take down a tree, now that tree, you put it through a chipper, and it just it fills one truck as opposed to needing four or five trucks to take it away. Mm -hmm. So it's the same principle. Um, you can use that for your yard waste, you can use that for C&D materials, you can use that for um, mattresses, box springs. You know, so it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't cost us $20 a box spring, uh, mattress anymore to mm -hmm. get rid of them. 
and those items can be sold to landfills for cover. Mm -hmm. So it would also generate revenue for us. Right now we're paying overtime to collect yard waste. We pay $177 a truckload to get rid of yard waste. If we can reduce that even by 50%, you've saved $125,000 a year because right now it's costing us about $250,000 a year. Mm -hmm. A grinder is a $300,000 investment. That can be paid for in two, three years tops. So it's a solution that isn't going to cost the taxpayers money in the long run, and it's only going to help us long term. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that could be a part of, in addition to, the transfer station. Because mm -hmm. the problem right now is we've paid as much as $68 a ton for solid waste and $42 a ton for recyclables to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. That's absurd. That's unconsciousable. Mm -hmm. We need to reduce, at minimum, reduce the cost for handling these things. And this would be a step in that direction. You now, whether it's the, you know whether it's the total answer, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the what it's going to come back with the task force report. Mm -hmm. I mean, they may choose to go in a whole other direction. Mm -hmm. But it's you know something that I think is um, viable. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, we need to we need to uh, have uh, different projects so we can work with and, and uh, options. We need to have options, and and that option, I like it. <laughs> Another thing that we've been uh, found out, uh, and we had a walk through the incinerator. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, the city of Fall River is gonna have to do something with the incinerator, cleaning, demolishing, whatever the city needs to do with the incinerator according to Ken Pacheco, mm -hmm. it's going to cost us about two million dollars to, you know, to do something with that. Uh, I believe it's two million. That two, million. Talked, uh, two million. Two million dollars. So, here is yikes. the first... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. That's what I say to that is yikes. And that's to have nothing in the end. Exactly. Yeah. That's to, to have nothing on the end, to have a piece of land on the end. So, here comes the first two million dollar savers because we're going to end up as, uh, spending the $2 million and end up with nothing in there. So here's the first $2 million that we're going to end up saving. Then after is how we can build a transfer station and don't costing anything to the taxpayers. And you have some numbers, right? Um, wh how we gonna, uh, how we can make it pay themselves, the transfer station. Well, again, any reduction in expense mm -hmm. is revenue, technically. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. same thing, yeah. The same thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, 700, say, you know, $1.5 million a year to get rid of um, solid waste. Mm -hmm. Well, if you reduce that by 50%, Mm -hmm. Now you're at seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. That's more than you would ever need to pay a bond. Mm -hmm. So your savings ultimately would c would pay long term to build you know to build the whole thing and, and take care of it all. Mm -hmm. um, I'm losing my train of thought here a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know it's a lot of numbers. <laughs> well, what? Uh, totally lost myself. This is awful. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, your main point is oh, clear, though. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I know what I was going to say. And, and then the other thing is, when you're building, you don't pay for the bond during the building process. You only pay for the, for the interest of the building loan. And it would take at least a, a two years to build it. Mm -hmm. It's going to take about a year for permitting, for licenses, to make sure we're even truly able to do it. Because again, why are we going to go forward with anything that uh, that we ultimately can't go forward with? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's all steps in a process. I have a question. Are you talking about? Uh, are we talking about a transfer station on the incinerator site? There Potentially. Uh, uh, Lawrence, Lawrence Street, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, that's a big enough area to do that. Yes. That was the question I always had about this. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you remember, Faust, um, going back probably a year, year and a half, when we were, the time that we were talking about the purple bags, uh -huh. contracts, Ken Pacheco, one of the proposals um, at that time presented to the city council 
was Ken Pacheco with the transfer station. Sure. Which he even uh, brought to the, to the city council for some plans. How the transfer station was going to look like, how it was going to be transformed, um, uh, how it was going to be sealed from the neighborhoods. Uh, from the neighborhoods and all of that. So that's based on, on Ken Pacheco's idea and using Ken Pacheco's mm -hmm. plans that, uh, you know, that we got all the numbers and, and all the figures. And one of the things, when, uh, when we visit the, uh, the, the, um, the sites that I asked them, noise. How the noise going to play with this, uh, with this neighborhood? How the smell is going to play with this neighborhood? And according to Ken Pacheco, people is not even going to notice that it's a transfer station in there. All right, I must have confused that. There was another proposal. You're talking about Mike Mayo's subcommittee meetings at the time. And there was another proposal from a private entity, and they mm -hmm. looked like they were looking for a lot of land. So that's, that was my confusion. Mm -hmm. So that can be done on that site. Yes. Mm -hmm. And because, so what you're saying is because we have to take down the incinerator anyway, yes. and that's going to cost money, and that's going to leave us with vacant land that can't really be used for very much, mm -hmm. it's certainly not going to be you know, some place you can put a ranch house on, No. that, that this sort of dovetails in because we, we're going to have an expense anyway. If on the other end we can save money, and you're right, it's, if you're paying a certain bill, it's like paying your car loan off. Mm -hmm. You have a $300 car loan you pay it off it's like you have three hundred dollars more coming in so a savings and a revenue are pretty much the same thing yes mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I, that I was uh, that I found out with Michelle uh, during the visits um, at the site was the uh, the license um, Ken Pacheco inform us that we uh, can have a license for 20 hundred tons a day I think that's the number that he mentioned to us we can get it to 400 but we only collect 200. I think that's, that's the way he said it. And he feels comfortable because if something goes wrong with the site and he has to shut down for 24 hours, we have license enough to stock it for 24 hours, the trash for 24 hours. Together with this uh, will be a, a place, um, and I think uh, at the time we were talking about uh, an old mill um, near to the, um, uh, to the, um, rail the railroad, yes, which we could stock at our um, uh, recycling to to sell it at a good price. So it you mean to time the market? Mm -hmm. Exactly. The market goes up exactly. and down for that. In terms that, of cardboard and metals and that and that sort of thing, uh -huh. the commodities. So it's uh, together with with that location will be probably another two sites. Uh, one to stock our uh, uh, recycling, and and another one just for the uh, uh, the, the yard material, I believe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can so I ask you another question? So it costs two million dollars to take down the incinerator, and it would cost money to to build a transfer station. What is what's the number for the transfer station? The yeah. number that we receive would be th thirteen to fifteen million. Mm -hmm. So you'd be talking a total of 15 to 17 million because this project would be done all at once. So, no, in I other words, you're taking down the. Does that include taking that, no, down? That, no, that it's oh, that fully incorporated. It take, yeah, includes everything. Taking down. Mm -hmm. About 15 million dollars, mm -hmm. 13, 15 million dollars. And the 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 savings slash revenue. Let's say savings alone, because there was talk of revenue, right? There was talk mm -hmm. about absolutely taking in recyclables or or other items that you know mm -hmm. maybe other mattresses from somewhere else. Uh, from uh, other communities, but just the, the revenue, the savings alone may be three quarters of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you put that out over a 30 year bond, yeah, the, and the numbers certainly add up that that could easily. Pay for and that's a conservative number. We're, we're, we're discussing 50%. Uh, you would go well over 50%, but we want to use conservative numbers. Yes. And again, the other thing that people also that people um, should know is that if we did choose to privatize, they could, we could use the, use the private company, they would bring it to our transfer station, we would mm -hmm. handle, and then they would pay us, mm -hmm. essentially, to bring our trash to us. Right, because they're paying a transfer station now. Right, mm -hmm. right, so that's another, so that's more right. revenue. All right, so this would be for all municipal solid waste. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And then just some of those items then could be 
marketed in one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we'd be responsible for where that municipal solid waste was going afterwards. Correct. Mm -hmm. Some of which, you, you, again, you could get into the composting uh -huh. because you, you reduce your, your solid waste with a transfer station by a minimum of 30%. So that's where the composting would come in. Um, composting seems like a no-brainer. That's got to be a very low-cost operation to compost. Mm -hmm. You've got a, bulldoze, a bulldozer and a piece of land. And pretty much you're doing that's, it. That's composting. Mm -hmm. It's really not labor-intensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, you're going to re so again, you're reducing your expense by another thirty percent, mm -hmm. because really, is it that much? Really, mm, it is. Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing. Uh, and 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 the reason that I think that um, and another reason that I think that that I like the transfer station is for the fact that we're not going to have our hands tied to no private company. We're not going to sell our trucks, sell our vans, or we're already paying for. Uh -huh. We're going to save all that. We're not going to fire any people that are working on the trash now. What Ken Pacheco is going to do is just move them to different departments that need, you know, to take care of our streets and yeah. potholes and, and, all, and all that. that, that. Uh, if we come with, with a, a, a private company. But uh, this would put us in a position that down, 10 years down the road, we want to come back. You know, and we want to pick up our trash again. We still have our, you know, our ways to do it. We, we're not going to be stuck in a position like New Bedford right now. It, they're stuck in a position because even if they, uh, even if they want to come back and, and, and collect their trash, now they have to bond for trucks again and, and, and for binding. They have to start from scratch again. And it's going to, it's, Easy going to 20, 20, 25 million dollars oh, yeah, to sure. start all over again. Because that and that is a concern of people. What do we yes. do with our trucks? What do we do with our bins? Mm -hmm. They just bonded another six hundred thousand for mm -hmm. yard waste carts. We don't have to get rid of them. He's exactly, exactly. right. Yeah. It could be incorporated into the contract. There mm -hmm. are so companies out there that don't have enough bins to service Fall River. We have them. Right. And, and a private company probably wouldn't care as long as the rates were okay. Mm -hmm. If they had to bring the because uh, right now. So we're told if we privatized the loan, the, uh, the hauler would have to bring it to a specific place, at least for the next three or four mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So that's not an impediment that they'd have to, they'd have to bring it somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it would change the contract. So, so what you're saying is privatization can work with this concept as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Um, where, I, where I live, and I don't, I don't live in town, uh, we have a transfer station. Mm -hmm. um, we compost, they compost. And, and actually, with a, where I live, if, if you have yard waste, you bring it yourself. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost anything, but there are a lot of other items that you bring yourself to the transfer station that does cost money. Mm -hmm. Demolition and construction material costs money. It's not a lot, but it mm -hmm. costs something. Um, if you bring, actually, um, yard waste, uh, for instance, leaves you don't pay for, but brush you do. Mm -hmm. Or if it's too much at once, I think you pay. So there are actually other fees involved and the, uh, the transfer station, everyone seems to be very happy with it, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, what we're proposing, of course, in Fall River, what you're proposing, there would be nothing that you'd have to bring yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. The city would still be able to pick up, the, because we'd have the trucks. Because in privatization, you, you can't throw a mattress on, you can't put the mattress mm -hmm. on, your, on your curbing. Like where I live, you can't do that. But the city, under your, your proposal here, would still be picking that up for people. Mm -hmm. They would be able to. They would still be able to. Yeah. We'd have the trucks. We'd have the personnel. Mm -hmm. You're starting to talk me into it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that's something that we're going to need to do is educate people. You know, talk about this. Because when this comes in front of the, the mayor or in front of the city councils, we want people to be able to, to call radio stations and to dialogue, to, you know, yeah. to be either in favor or opposed, or oh, I think if they try this, it will be better. You know, the, when we talk, uh, you know, and we combinate our ideas, you know, we get more results. And I think that's the idea that Michelle, uh, you know, and, and, and that's why I want to give her the support to do that, is to inform early on the game. 
Let's inform the people early on the game. And now that we know that we have, you know, the support of people to build the transfer station, that it's out of the question. Because this could, if we weren't accomplished this way that we accomplished, then the city council, will, that will be on the laps of the city council to decide. Let's bond another $20 million, you know, for people to pay for. And people are not going to be happy with that, you know. So right. this way, they can very well say, you know something, that's what this, the residents of Fall River want, okay? So they don't have to, to feel that, you know, they go and then, they, especially if it's election yeah. month, yeah. election uh, year, uh, yeah. one's going to vote, the other one's not going to vote because they don't want a, another bond. You the know great, what I'm saying? Yeah, the great pressure of exactly. a bonding mm -hmm. that so this way, somehow exists. This way, we are in front of the line. Right. Uh, Essen essentially, the whole thing with getting the non-binding question was, it was a barometer. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, yes. Because if the people weren't willing, if the people didn't want it then why look at options that are they going to cost that kind of money? But I think one of the, one of the clear messages is that, that the people of Fall River want options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, they, and they want to know. They want to, they, 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 I think they're saying, yes, come directly to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there's nothing, never anything wrong with that, but I think they're embracing it, saying, we want the information and we want, we want options. Mm -hmm. So that, that much is clear. Uh, I know that you know there's a task force Yes. I guess report that will eventually be given. Uh, do you know if the task force considered a transfer station? Uh, I mean, at the beginning, I remember when we start talking about the transfer station. You know, it was a problem to even to, to mention transfer station. Oh. But ha how does the election start to roll it? You know, now we start hearing even mm. even r people running for, for office start yeah. talking about oh the transfer station will be a good idea you know so I think after the question was approved to go on the ballot that the whole game changed nobody has really come forward because mm -hmm. the report hasn't been turned into it, it is a to secret report but it's, point, yeah is but there again, a little bit of grumbling that yeah. it, perhaps part of the report might include a transfer station mm -hmm. but again there, there actually has been some talk yeah. there on the committee yeah, and I think it is going to be in there first I good would be the recommendation from any board to say we agreed with the transfer station if the people don't agree to pay for. You know what I'm saying? Sure, yeah. So that's the point that we're trying to get is to give them a tool that, you know, that definitely they need to know if people are in support, in favor of the transfer station. That's a big tool for them to make decisions. If they decided to go with the transfer station. Honestly, um, I don't want to start any trouble, but I, I thought that the task force was oddly charged. Uh, they were charged with giving a recommendation, and that sounds okay on paper, but those subcommittee hearings that Mike Mayoza held, uh, those were really designed to give information and not a recommendation, because ultimately, you know, the mayor and the city council together really have to m make that decision. And I... I, I kind of, I, I think that it's odd to ask the task force for a recommendation when you could certainly just ask them for information. Please do some research and give us all the options. And I really think that that's what the people of Fall River want. They just want the options. They don't want to be mm -hmm. told what is the best option. They want to be told what the options are. Mm -hmm. So that I think this is treating and, and, the people of Fall River with intelligence. Especially, yeah, and giving them respect. Exactly. Yeah. And, and putting uh, down people's throat. Yeah. Whatever the, the, the politics decided, they're going to happen, you know, with the past two mayors or yeah. three mayors. Essentially, so we're trying to put the horse in front of the cart for a change. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I think, yeah. I think as, as the, we, we get more information and we get more information out that people's going to start, you know, talking about and per being participating ab about the transfer station. The only thing that I really, uh, don't like it's not that I, I don't like on this on this whole thing it's just I will feel comfortable if was was another option on our plate was the fact that we cannot we're not big enough to take outside trash that's really the only thing that we're gonna this it's just for Fall River trash I mean it's gonna resolve our problem uh -huh. but if we could accept 
trash from outside. Now we could even make more money because we were going to charge the outsiders to get their trash. Well, that was one of the concerns I had about that site. That I thought some. It's thought. not. It's not big enough. I mean, uh, uh, um, you know. Uh, and again, uh, I think that's what Ken Pacheco informed us was will be enough. We can make this work for Fall River Trash. Mm -hmm but it's not big enough to accept. And believe me, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, two or three hours looking for uh, um, uh, land so we could build this whole thing together, okay? We don't have one piece of land in Fall River hmm. that could be developed, nothing. We looked through everything, everything. Every parcel that I saw that was big enough, um, we try to, to, to see either it's wetlands or cannot be developed, you know, so we are really stuck. We don't have no, like a big piece of land that we could put all this together, like build from scratch, the whole thing. So that's why we stuck. We don't have land enough to do that. But again, it's options and it's information. And that's, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. if the public gets involved, mm -hmm. as you say, Carlos, the elected officials should welcome that because it only helps them. Mm -hmm. So and and, and again, and again, we have to thank the, the city council because you know they all voted um, f to have this question on the ballot, and I think it was a very important question to have on the ballot because we are talking about trash for, for the past year and a half. Yep. You know, and this is seems like longer, but <laughs> yeah, but this is just one question that probably can open the whole box. You know, that can really develops into something to resolve the problem so I'm and, happy and to that. really and as it unfolds we'll get more in depth with numbers etc mm -hmm. because as you know part of the problem is the numbers fluctuate yeah. considerably mm -hmm. so um, you know we're months into this again and numbers have changed again so mm -hmm. now we'll get back into crunching them and, and showing reality as opposed to Guesswork. I think the market for recyclables has changed since Ken Pacheco's first presentation because the m it's to some extent tied to the market for oil, plastics, mm -hmm. and oil's gone down in price. So I'm sure in a year and a half, it's probably been that long, mm -hmm. the, that those have changed. But again, it's, it's information and it's options. I think it's a great thing. Yeah. But no matter what happens, we're going to save money. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're at, the, at, at the maximum end of what we're paying to get rid of our trash right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's basically just, a, to me, I think a win-win situation. And especially if you, we incorporate the other facets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and again, the people are concerned about privatization. Actually, if you, <laughs> if you wanted to go, go extreme, you could actually privatize all of it. You know, there's a lot of people don't, sure. there's a lot of people don't realize that, that the water, the, um, water is, is privatized, it has been for years. In mm -hmm. the South End, the this treatment plant, the sure. city doesn't yeah. run that. Sure, absolutely, mm -hmm. right. Never, they haven't. People don't realize that. Yeah. So I mean, you could do that with this. Yeah, it's and again, it's, it's just options that we can sit on the table and come up with something, you know. So Michelle, thank you for coming again. Uh, I think we have <laughs> you, we, or oh, thank you for bringing me into into this. But it was something. It's something that I would love to to, to help. Faust, well, we know you're the one who can get it done. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Faust, next week. Always a pleasure. Sure. See you next week. Thank you.